I want to show you how you can create a drone footage video without needing a drone. And it's all free. The videos playing behind me right now are created in Google Earth Studio. You can access this for free. I'll put a link to it down below in the description. You just have to sign up and then it takes about a day to get access to it. But with this, you can create individual custom videos that you can download as MP4s. And then you could put them together in another video editor, put music to them and just like a normal video. So I'm gonna show you how to use this to create this drone looking footage in Google Earth Studio today on Teachers Tech. I'm already logged in to my Google Earth Studio and right away you can see that we could create a blank project but what I would suggest is drop down and choose one of the quick starts if you're brand new to this. I'll come back to the blank projects after I show you an example of a quick start and then it'll give you a better understanding how uh, to create a blank project. So I'm going to choose quick start. We get some examples here we have zoom to orbit, they kind of show what's happening in each of these if you choose these uh, pre-made actions. I'm gonna go and just move over one more and we have fly and orbit, fly to and orbit. So I'm gonna choose this one, you can see it's selected and I'm gonna hit start. And it pops up with some just easy walkthrough screens. First of all, I could center your, uh, your orbit point in the frame. I'm gonna go ahead and just type a location and I'm gonna use New York here. So once we pick our location, you could type in whatever location on, uh, on the earth you can, and it will go and find that. But I'm gonna go and just choose next. Once we do that, it kind of gives me a preview of what's happening. All of this can be adjusted from the flight path uh, to all of these things from end altitude, orbit radius, target altitude, and approach angle. With any of these, if I just drag, so if I go to end angle, you can see I'm bringing up the altitude, so this is where it would end. And you can make those adjustments to what you want. Target altitude, if you bring it up too much, then you're just gonna be looking at the sky. So I'm just gonna keep this uh, down at this point. We have our orbit radius here uh, that you can just quickly adjust and you gives you an idea. So play with these and see what uh, you like. And then once you have everything set, if you want it clockwise, uh, you just go ahead and check this. I'm gonna leave this and hit the next. How long do you want this to be? This is at 25 seconds. If you wanted it a little bit longer, Let's go ahead and hit 30 seconds and then hit the check mark. So now it brings us into uh, this screen. And if I go ahead up top, notice that we have some controls. I could go to full screen if I wanted to. I could loop the playback. Uh, let's go ahead and hit play. And it, if you watch the playhead here as it goes through, it shows at different points and these are going to be different keyframes that they've already created for you. If you're starting from a blank project, you would get to add the, the keyframes in and then you can go fly from point to point and add different keyframes. But I'll come back to that later. So uh, a different way, if you hit your space bar, you, that will work also to stop and start. And we can drag this uh, to get to whatever point we want. Now, what I want to show you is over here, this view. So we can change our viewport layout. And let, what I like to do is this number two. If I pick number two, this shows me the path. So watch this. I'm going to just bring this backwards. Shows me where it starts on the map. And then it flies in. And then it will zoom up on this part here. And notice how the, the camera always seems to be looking at a certain spot. It's always looking at this right here. And I can move this to a different spot and then it's always going to be focused on that and that's going to be the angle that it gets filmed on. So if I drag through, uh, I can zoom out a bit so you can see a little bit more how everything's, how everything's working on here. So I really like to have these two different views. Now, to make the adjustments, it's very easy. If I go and grab one of these white circles here, I can drag them anywhere I want. So I'm gonna zoom out here, and let's say I want a much bigger uh, area to cover. I'm gonna grab uh, one of these circles. I can grab the kind of the camera to move it around at any time too, but if I grab the circle, and let's say I'm gonna zoom out even more, and I'm gonna bring it out to this point over here, and I'll grab these. So notice how I can manipulate these. I can bring these all around to get the shape that I want here. So I'll drag, keep this one here and I'll drag this over so we can move them all around. Now, if I move my flight path, look at this of what I'm seeing now. And these are adjustable here. So notice 
So we have, uh, this gets adjusted through here, but I could change my altitude here if I wanted it to be lower. If I put this to 200, it's gonna be uh, easily adjusted through this point. So I have these uh, quick changes that I made. So I mentioned that this is where it's at, focused at over here. I can move this. So if I just move this a little bit, notice how the camera is focusing on this. But this red dot here, if I go ahead and move this, and I could focus it on this. So here's an example now. If I drag my uh, this around, you can see it's always looking at that. So depending on what the focus point you want, just move this around. If I put it right here, and then now, as I fly around the whole thing, it's always going to be looking at that point. Even as I go by it, it's going to try to look at that the whole time. So you can make these really quick adjustments to this. I want to talk a little bit more about keyframes here. When I moved this to this spot and typed in 200 in the altitude, it created this, t, uh, this keyframe. And now it will move from this keyframe and all the way to the different attributes on this keyframe. So you can see the long, where the longitude, latitude, and the altitude. If you take a look at the Statue of Liberty, if I change this specific keyframe, so I can change the ones that are even there or add new ones. So if I typed in, let's say 30, and now look at this, here's the Statue of Liberty. I'm a lot lower now on this, but as this moves forward, so at, this is at 30 meters altitude, and then it will continue to climb. If you look at the altitude to the next keyframe, it's gonna go back up to that 285. So I can add different keyframes at different points to change things like longitude, latitude. And if I go down a little bit, you can add keyframes to the camera as well. So if I move this back, I can even turn off uh, how I've showed you that it tracks. If I go and uh, turn this off, if I drag this through, notice now uh, it's not looking at that point anymore. So depending on what you want, if I turn it back on, now it's gonna follow uh, that uh, tracking to that spot that I have. And we can add all these different things to this. So even thinking about the, uh, the tracking it has on that point here, if I go ahead and change the influence, so if I go 50%, on this. So now as I go through, it's going to be 50% off that focus of it. So it, you can adjust those very easily by changing the influence, but you can also go through, and this is more specific just to the camera target. How do you want to have latitude and longitude? And like I said, we can add these specific keyframes. So uh, with any of these, if I go and add them, then we're going to have an adjustment. You can see how it's already changing. And if we look at where it's looking at over here versus where it was before. If I want to take away any of these things, if I go control Z, it will undo those last steps as well. The other thing I want to point out, we can add more attributes. So if we click right here, I have camera target on, but I can add things like field of view, time of day, clouds, and 3D buildings, and all these other attributes to this. So once you hit done, you're gonna notice that you have a lot of different things. So I, I'm not gonna go through them all, but if I wanted to say, you know what, I wanna see New York at night, I can make an adjustment to the time. So if we move this ahead, let's say move this to 2200 here, and notice that it's a little darker, Let's go even darker here. Let's go to 2400. And now we can see that we're in night. The other thing I want to point out is you can um, have, if you want it locations turned on, you can do that. If I go under view and map style, I'm under clean, but we can go exploration and everything. And when I turn this on, notice that you can have all these different things marked. If you did want that as part of your video, but I don't want it on mine, I'm just going to keep this clean. Let's say you're all done. You've got everything that you want, the path, you've made the adjustments. You can render this now. You can also actually take a snapshot or save a current frame to, J, uh, to JPEG. So I can move this to where I want and click on this to save a JPEG image. But what we wanna do is render this. So I'm just gonna go click on render 
And what do we want? We have our image sequence. So we could do JPEG, renders locally on your computer, or video. This one, I'm gonna choose this one. It's gonna be an MP4, and then they're gonna email it to me when it's done. So we can go ahead and title this. So if I was gonna call this New York, uh, I'll keep it there. We have our frame zero to 900, dimensions 1920 by 1080. I'll keep it at that high def. Uh, now the attributes, you have to have the attributes on here. That's that Google Earth, the copyright image resources here. And then, uh, so you can change where you want this though. Uh, so you can make a custom. For me, I'm just leaving it where it is. And then you can also change the X and Y axis in the alignment of it. So we also have advanced tracking. Uh, none on this one we have our coordinate space global map style clean these are all the different things i picked i do want to point out right here if we wanted it to be a video in 360 where you upload it to youtube and you can uh, watch it through vr you can do that but make sure you have this clicked so with those different options here i'm going to go and hit submit and then it will be rendered and i'll get an email back to this so I'll open up a different one that I already have done. So this is the email that I received on a previous one. It's of New York as well. I didn't title this one. It's just called Untitled. And you just click on it and download this. And this will download to your computer as that MP4. Then you could go and add it to a different video editor, add music, and maybe clip a different bunch of ones together. We also have Manage Renders here. So I click on this, it shows me the previous one that I did and I can download it from here and this is the current one that we just did uh, that won't take very much longer and I can also download from here but they'll send me an email as well. If you're going to go and create a blank project and I'm just going to click on blank we'll give it a name we'll call this demo I want to point out we can do earth moon and mars as well so we're not limited to just the earth you could pick a different path on it we can also if you wanted it to be at 4k we could up this to 3840 by 2160 and if you unlock this you can change the aspects on this this is indicated in frames how long it would be i can change it to time code so then if you wanted to adjust it to 25 seconds or 30 seconds you can make those changes and we do have a frame rate that we can also adjust i'm going to go ahead and hit start now at this point this is where you can work through to get to specific places and then you'll have to add your keyframe uh, so if i was going to go and find a spot i could do it like this or i could even do a search so if i do a search i could uh, uh, go ahead and we'll do banff here and we're going to go down so we're in the mountains we could use this as a place to start with and then i could add a keyframe so if i go and add my keyframe i can just add it right here so now that is set so i could go and adjust to a different spot if i drag this ahead and adjust this to a new spot over here and add another keyframe notice as i go through so this is where the first shot was and as it goes through to the next one, and I can make all those different adjustments to the longitude, latitude, the camera rotation. I find it easier to start with some of those quick starts and adjust that way, but if you knew exactly what you wanted, you could go through and fly through different buildings and get it just the way you want just from this point and adding all those different attributes that I showed you. Uh, if you're done this, what you can do, so if I was going to go and go file new, notice that if I go uh, blank project, the save comes up. So I can go ahead and save this. Uh, I can keep it as demo and I'm just going to hit save here. And then I can go ahead and even start a new one here. And that project is save. Then if I was coming back to this, if I was going to go open project again, I could open the last project that I was working on and here it is uh, if I needed to continue on with it. I hope you like this tour of Google Earth Studio and seeing how easy it is to create this drone-like footage. I notice a lot of people are creating things like YouTube shorts or even YouTube videos with this in and they're adding music to it. Some definitely some fun you can have with this for many different purposes. Thanks for watching this week on Teachers Tech. I'll see you next time with more tech tips and tutorials.